video, I want to talk about graphing periodic functions. When we graph sine and cosine functions, we typically graph them in radians. You can choose between radians and degrees in that wrench menu in Desmos. Radians and degrees are the buttons at the bottom. In the wrench menu, you can also specify the step size of the graph. That's how often the tick marks appear on the x-axis. You can specify that with multiples of pi. Now you can use pi from the Desmos keyboard or you can simply type the letters pi if you're on a laptop and Desmos will convert those letters to pi. Let's go ahead and give this a try. Using technology, we're going to sketch y equals 4 cosine x plus 2. Now the plus 2 is not inside the cosine, it's outside the cosine. So it's 4 cosine of x and then plus 2 to the right. We're going to determine the period, the amplitude, and the midline for this function. So let's jump over to Desmos and graph y equals 4 cosine x plus 2. I'm going to start by inputting y equals 4, and then the functions menu holds all those trig functions, so I'll choose cosine from there, and then the x gets inserted into the parentheses so it's 4 cosine left paren x, right paren, and then plus 2 on the outside of that. So this is a lovely periodic function. If we start at the y-axis, the graph starts at 0, 6. It goes down from there with a smooth curve, traveling through the point 2 pi over 3, 0 to a minimum value of pi, negative 2 then back up to the x-axis at 4 pi over 3 comma 0 and back up to the top of the periodic function at 2 pi comma 6. It continues to repeat that cycle over and over. Now just to show you how different this function looks, if we were graphing in degrees, I'm going to move over to that wrench menu and switch to degrees for just a second. And what you'll see is basically a horizontal line. It looks horizontal anyways. If we were to actually zoom out, you'll start to see that there is a curve to this graph, but you have to zoom way, way out to see it become periodic. And the reason is that a full cycle takes 360 units on the x-axis to view it. And that's one of the reasons why we use radians. So I'm gonna go back into the wrench menu and switch to radians and click on the home button to move back to a window that's a little bit easier to view in. Now I said before that we can change the step size on the x-axis to count by pi. So if I go back into the wrench menu and go to the x-axis, I can change that x-axis to be from a minimum to a maximum that includes pi. So let's say from negative 2 pi to positive 4 pi, and I'm going to make my step size pi divided by 4. Now I might not see the divided by 4s. As I zoom in and out, you'll see the graph continue to scale by multiples of pi. All right, so what is the period, amplitude, and midline for this graph? Well, let's start with the midline. The midline would be the horizontal line halfway between the minimum and maximum. The minimum was at negative 2 for a y value, and the maximum is at 6, which would put our midline at y equals 2. And we can graph it just to make sure that looks appropriate, which it does. I'm going to change it to be a dashed line, so it appears as a midline, y equals 2. I'm going to go back to my notes and sketch that one in. Always a good idea to sketch in the midline if you have it. I'm also going to sketch in the maximum value just to kind of help me. I'm going to use a pencil to do that. So I'm going to just make a line where the maximum occurs. And I'm going to make a line where the minimum occurs. So the maximum was at a value of 6 and the minimum is at a value of negative 2. All right, what else do we know? Well, going back to our graph, it looks like we have a maximum point at 0 comma 6 and another maximum point at 2 pi comma 6, which means that a full cycle takes 2 pi units. The middle of that cycle occurs at the minimum value of pi comma negative 2. So let's draw those points next. So those are points at 0 comma 6, 
2 pi comma 6 and pi comma negative 2. Notice I can place those easily on my maximum and minimum lines there. I'd like to find just a few other values to get a nice graph from this. And let's plot the points that are along the midline. So we have a point at pi over 2 comma 2 and 3 pi over 2 comma 2. And from this, I should be able to sketch a graph. I have a nice smooth curve going down through pi over 2 comma 2 to a minimum value of pi comma negative 2 back up to 3 pi over 2 comma 2 and then back up to 2 pi comma 6. And the graph continues after that going in both directions following that same cyclical pattern. So the period was 2 pi. That's the time it takes to go from maximum to maximum. It's also the time it takes to go from minimum to minimum. The midline was at y equals 2. Again, make sure you write that as an equation, not just a point. And then the amplitude is the distance from the midline to the maximum or the midline to the minimum. And in both cases, that's 4. And you might have started to notice a trend here. You can actually read off the amplitude as the number that's in front of the sine or cosine. That's the multiple of a sine or cosine. And we know that multiples outside the function do stretch graphs vertically, right? So it should be no big surprise that that's the amplitude. Now I have one for you to try. I'd like you to use technology to help you enlist six properties of y equals 4 sine left paren pi x over 2 right paren. So the pi x over 2 is all inside the sine function. Pause the video and give it a try. Okay, we're back. Let's see how you did. The first thing I did was jump over to Desmos and graph this function. Let me just describe it really quickly. On the y-axis, we start at the point 0, 0. Then we increase up to a maximum of 1, 4. Then back down through the axis at 2, 0. Down to a minimum of 3, negative 4. Up to 4, 0 then up to a maximum of 5 comma 4. That's essentially where we're starting to see a repeat of the maximum. And then it goes back down through 6, 0, 7, negative 4, back up to the axis of 8, 0. So it's a little bit like a sine curve, only it's taller than a sine curve and it has a different period than a sine curve. So let's start talking about properties here. The first one I'm going to graph is the midline. And the midline here is at y equals 0. So let's write that down as a property. All right, well, what else can we say? From the midline to the maximum or the midline to the minimum is a distance of 4. So the amplitude is 4. The period would be going from the maximum to the maximum. Again, if I plot those points, 1, 4 and 5, 4, the horizontal distance between those would be 5 minus 1, or 4 units. Likewise, we could go from minimum to minimum, and between 3, negative 4 and 7, negative 4, the horizontal distance would be measured by 7 minus 3, which is, again, 4 units. So the period would be 4. Okay, what else do we know about this? Well, we do know that it's a periodic function. And we could write its domain and range. Now, the domain for this function is any value of x whatsoever, so negative infinity to infinity. And the range is from a minimum y value of negative 4 to a maximum y value of positive 4. So domain, left paren, negative infinity, comma, infinity, right paren. And range is left bracket negative 4 comma 4 right bracket. Now other things we could talk about here would be a minimum value of negative 4 and a maximum value of positive 4. So there you go, eight properties of this function.